Thank you for joining me in this video. This is one of our new plant series of videos which have to do with your digital presence, how that is perceived, how you shape it, how you curate your identity and how you achieve more with less effort on the web. Today we're going to tackle content. Now it used to be that content was something that was separate from pretty much everything else. We used to talk about content in a very specific terms and then we used to talk about branding, we used to talk about marketing, we used to talk about search engine optimization. And these days content is an all-encompassing umbrella term that contains all of these elements together inside and at the same time it has specific uh, focus points of its own where it achieves very specific um, aims in terms of perhaps ranking a website on the web, establishing a particular brand in terms of its brand values and its brand focus, playing a particular role in marketing perhaps, and certainly curating identity when it comes to focus um, of content creation at a personal level. So we are going to try and address all of this today in this short video and hopefully it will give you a little bit of an idea of what it is you should be doing and how you should be doing it. Now, I have to say that if you're already an established content creator, you most likely know what you're doing, so this is not the kind of video that will really help you. Unless, of course, you've lost your way, which is possible. With time, we tend to lose focus of what we do. The surroundings and the imperatives of our everyday life tend to absorb us, and then it is very easy sometimes to lose direction, in which case this will help. So let's discuss the role of content in itself. Obviously, we need content in order to establish a presence in a digital domain. The way we establish that presence is through the different formats of um, creating perhaps some particular kind of messaging, showcasing our knowledge, um, or opening a discussion about something very specific to what we do. At the same time, content is used to establish identity. We use it to um, give a sense to the reader or to the visitor or to the viewer of who we are. We do that through our tone perhaps and when it comes to video obviously the clothes we wear, the surroundings we have and so on and so on. So these are things which you need to take into consideration when you consider how you're going to um, actually create the content that you want to create. Other things which content does is it helps establish values perhaps by, again, drawing attention to particular aspects which we find important or particular sort of ideas or themes or elements or whatever it is that we actually are trying to discuss with the content that we create. So this is the sort of a very general overview of what it is. Now, when it comes to actually deciding how to create content or, you know, how often you should do it, you know, these are sort of like technicalities which uh, revolve around your own skill and capabilities and sense of ability in terms of commitment and so on. So if you do videos, for instance, it is important to set um, a basis where you create video content on a regular basis. And I'm kind of smiling a little bit here because this is something which I do not follow for many reasons and I will explain them in this particular video to show you uh, my decision-making process when it comes to creating content. I'm a writer by nature and although I'm comfortable in front of the camera and certainly I've been to a lot of hangouts on air, I've been to a lot of interviews, I've been to a lot of TV spots and so on, when it actually comes to projecting myself through the video, it's something which makes me inherently uncomfortable and I don't always know why. I mean, I've tried to analyze it in myself. I know perhaps that it's something which feels like I'm putting myself out there as in, you know, being different or being best or being, trying to be an innovator. And it doesn't sit comfortable, comfortably, <laughs> it doesn't sit comfortably with me. So when it comes to creating video content, I have to force myself to commit to a particular series with a particular kind of value in mind for the audience and that allows me to overcome my own disinclination to create this kind of co content in this type of format and actually do it. So these are things which you need to take into account. Obviously writing is my forte and I you know, perhaps bring out sometimes an article a day if I have a lot of stuff going on in the week and there's a lot of source material, I have a lot of ideas, I actually bring all the, all the, all the material out without thinking twice about it and I feel incredibly comfortable in that domain. At the same time, for me personally, again, part of my personal growth is getting, stepping outside my own comfort zone 
and addressing things like this one here, which makes me a little bit uncomfortable to talk about it, um, because it's something which is intensely personal. So, having said that, you know, this is how you should be thinking about creating content. I know content creators that do very well with the visual medium and they use pictures only and they're very active on um, Instagram, obviously, and Pinterest. And there are content creators who do extremely well with memes and they draw a lot of attention to their perhaps Twitter profile or Facebook profile through the sharing of those memes. But again, you have to think the kind of content which you create, how does that address your particular needs in terms of your business perhaps. So memes may not be the best way to do this. Uh, perhaps in, in terms of your brand value and your brand image and how you create it and so on. Again, these are things to consider as you're thinking about content, how to create it, what, what type of content you should create and so on. Having said all this, I'm going to give you a small formula which you can apply. So when it comes to creating content, always start with what is easy for you. And again, I'm taking myself as an example here. For me, writing is the easiest form of communication because I've been doing it all my life. So when it comes to creating content and I need something quickly to be created in order to get a message out there or in order to start a conversation about something which I think is important, then I go to my number one strength and that's writing. So that's how you start. What's easiest for you? The second thing which you need to consider is what's important to you. Again, when it comes to creating content for me, I always make sure that what I'm writing about or what I'm talking about like here has an inherent value for the audience and that is important to me. If I feel that I'm not actually putting value out there, then I just become very aware of my own sort of sophistry, if you like. I'm doing something which is perhaps sleek and draws attention and has very, very thin value. And that doesn't sit well with me, so I don't do it. So you need to think, you know, what you're doing has to have importance to you. It has to have meaning for you in terms of what you do. And that ties into the third thing when it comes to creating content in that it has to tie with your values. A writer, essentially, which is what I am primarily, is a content creator. So one of the things which sort of ties into my identity is part of my value system, if you like, is that whatever I create, whatever I put out there, has to have some very specific value about the individual. There are some things that are really very personal to me in terms of my interests and I could write reams and reams about them or I could even talk about them for ages and I'm aware they would have a very small audience and they would be of very little use to that audience. So I don't do any of those things. So really um, when it comes to doing this I have to think who needs it, how badly do they need it, what do they need to know about it in order to become more effective in their lives and that's the litmus test which I apply to the content which I create. So values ties into that. The fourth thing you need to think about is identity. Essentially, your content represents you. It becomes part of the initial facet of contact or interface of contact between you and your audience. Through that content, they get a feel of who you are. I'm consciously aware of this when I'm writing um, because I, I, I can sometimes tend to be a little bit esoteric about my writing. I, you know, I, 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 whether I'm writing about search or marketing or social media or behavior, I come from a background of deep research and my initial tendency is to reflect that in the terminology I use perhaps or the concepts which I apply. And I know in retrospect, I know in analysis and also feedback sometimes that this is a big turn-off because it doesn't really resonate with the audience, it's too dense, too complex, they don't understand it, they don't see the immediate value. So then I'm failing my audience, I'm failing that contract which I have with them, with you as you're consuming this. So then I go back to my own writing or to my own audio um, creation or to my own video creation and I simplify it, I make sure that it resonates as much as possible. And in doing so I have to be very careful so as not to lose the value which I've put in there but at the same time I try to increase the communicability, so it's actually more accessible. So that is how I approach it and that ties into my identity, it's who I am and that's what you need to do as well. So you've got to think about how who you are needs to be reflected in what you do in terms of content creation.
So if you follow that small formula which I've just given you, then you'll find that your ability to create content which serves you and at the same time serves your audience increases by quite a lot of factors. And that hopefully makes the whole thing a lot more uh, digestible, it makes it easier for you to create content on a regular basis. It makes it easier for you to decide just what kind of content to create, when to create it, how often, and so on, and obviously what type of content you should be focusing on. If you have any more questions, please you know, put them in the um, comments bo comment box below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I always appreciate it. Don't forget to reach out to me either on Twitter or on YouTube if you're consuming this on YouTube or you know, on my own website or anywhere else you see me on the web, Medium or LinkedIn and so on. I always take some time to respond to you and my uh, response is always considered. So I actually think about what you say. Thanks again. I hope you find it useful. Stay safe out there and I'll bring out another video very soon. Take care.